My quilting life has had some ups and downs over the last year, but what that has taught me is that it is really important for me to focus on quilts that I really am excited about and ones that I really love. I, for a while, got into production mode where I was just quilting and making as many quilts as I possibly could. But now I've really focused on what it is about quilts that makes me happy. And those patterns that have been on my bucket list for years are finally at the forefront of my list and I've started working on them and I've never been happier quilting. Right now, that quilt that is taking up all of my time are these little scrap blocks, these little adorable nine patch blocks made from the scraps of my recent quilts. And I have never been more excited about a project. So today I wanna to share with you why I think this quilt project will stay with me and evolve with me through the life of my quilting career, how to stay organized with it, and how to cut up all these little scraps into tiny squares without losing your mind. So I know that you have some scraps, so grab them and let's make this quilt together. So if you go way back on my channel, one of my very first videos was how I take my scraps and I cut them into usable sizes. And I defined those as 10 inch squares, five inch squares and strings. And I did make some quilts from those scraps. I made this flying geese quilt. I made a little plaid quilt and I made some string quilts as well. But each of those quilts were more like a project that I happened to use scrap fabric for rather than an ongoing project that I could revisit and work on over a long period of time. And I don't know why my mind makes that distinction, but it does. And what I was really looking for was like a little basket of scraps that I could always have out and just make a little block and add it to the pile. And over time, I would create a quilt. And that's why I've really shifted how I work with my scraps. I'm not cutting them down into pre-cut sizes anymore, but I am cutting them down into two inch squares. And this basket is two inch squares, all cut from my most recent quilts. I think I have about four or so um, quilts worth of scraps in this little basket. These fabrics, even though they are scraps from different quilts, they still all have some unifiedness to them because there's collections within here. So there's a lot of cotton and steel that go together. There's a lot of Anna Maria Horner that go together. And there's also just my style from this year. The fabrics that I was drawn to this year do have some colors in common. And that makes this basket like uniquely me and yours will be uniquely you for this point in time. So as I make blocks from this, it's gonna be a little catalog, a little revisit of the quilts that I have made during this time. All of these blocks will be unique to me. Now, as I generate more scraps, I am refilling this basket from the bottom up. So next quilt I make, I'll cut my squares from the scraps and just stick them in the bottom so that the makeup of this basket will subtly change over time. These blocks all have these really rich saturated colors, this magenta and this dark blue, but maybe next year I'll be drawn to different colors and the makeup of this basket and the resulting blocks will feel a little different, but they'll still feel like me. And so they'll still all go together. So that's the idea behind this. All of my scraps are gonna go into this basket and eventually make their way into scrap quilts that will be like a little journey, a little reflection of my journey through the quilt life. For this iteration of my scrap quilt, I have chosen to make a, an Irish chain, just a simple Irish chain. And I have broken it down into nine patches to make the piecing and the working with the scraps really simple. So the pattern that's available for free breaks down into three different nine patches that you'll need to make. Now to stay organized, I don't want you to have to count the number of blocks of each type that you have made. There are numbers here if you would prefer that method, but there is also a diagram on the second page. And what I've done is I've just printed it out and I am just putting an X through the blocks as I make them. So the next block I make, if it's a nine patch all of scraps, then I'll find that and I'll put a little X through it. And once this is all filled up with X's, I know that I will have all the blocks I need to make the quilt without any counting. Once I'm done with this quilt, 
I don't have to make Irish chain quilts forever. Um, there's lots of different patterns that use the same size block. And here's a few that I'm putting up on the screen. You could choose one of those to start, or you could alternate. You could do Irish chains with a different background color every year if you wanted, or every six months if you sew a lot. This method, this idea isn't about the exact quilt that you make. It's about this ever evolving supply of scraps that reflect you. So you can pick whatever pattern you like that uses little square scraps and alternate them over the years or make a million Irish chain quilts. Uh, the method is just about processing the scraps and having that ever evolving supply of scraps that really reflect you during a certain period in your quilting life. So right now it's an Irish chain for me. Next year, maybe it'll be tiny little half square triangles. Who knows? So let's talk about what might be the most painful part of this project, and that is cutting all of your scraps down into squares to get started. When I began this project, I was cutting them with a ruler, you know, moving it two inches, and it was slow going. So I ordered all three of the Stripology rulers from Creative Grids to see if they could speed it up. And since they're in different sizes, which size would actually be best for cutting up scraps? So after cutting a lot of scraps with all three of the Stripology rulers, I found that the best two were the Stripology Squared Ruler and the Stripology Mini Ruler. They seem to be best sized for working with fat quarter scraps that uh, came from like a fat quarter bundle. Uh, the Stripology Mini was great for cutting those little pieces down without having a giant ruler to turn. And the Stripology Squared Ruler was better for most of the scraps. If I had to pick one, I would get the Stripology Squared Ruler. Another essential thing was a kind of medium sized cutting mat that you could rotate the entire mat. So you can plonk your ruler down, cut your fabric into strips, and then rotate the entire mat and line up your ruler going the opposite way to cut your strips into squares. Using that ruler and the extra cutting mat really made the process go really quickly. It only took me about 15 minutes to process a bunch of scraps down into squares. And that was enough of a supply to really get me started making all of these little blocks. So now that you've cut a bunch of little tiny squares, let's start making them into blocks. So here's my diagram. Um, I have already X'd off all the blocks that I have made, and I usually just pick the next column or the next row and get started. Let's go with this next row here, and the first block is an empty square, which means it's an all scrap and nine patch. And that's explained right here, shown as solid white on the diagrams, just so there wasn't a million tiny lines on this diagram. So I need nine little scraps sewn into a nine patch. So from my basket, I just start pulling little scraps. And I don't put too much thought into this. I try not to have two similar fabrics right next to each other, but I generally just grab an assortment and lay them out. And I'll take a little bunch and flip them over to get some new material to work with. Let's grab this little square since we don't have one of those. And that's it. That's exactly how much thought I put into this block. So there are many ways to sew a nine patch together. I generally sew my squares into rows and then I sew my rows together to complete my block. If you think of it as a number pad, I sew one and two together to start my first row. And then I immediately sew three to two. You don't need to press in between right here since you're not intersecting that seam at all. And then once this is done, I'll go ahead and press it and put it back. Once I have finished with row one, then I move on to row two, sewing it together exactly the same way as I did with row one. I do take my time here and align my edges, and you can also see that I am pressing my seam allowances open. That's totally a personal preference. As you know, if you've seen my videos, I almost always press everything open, but if you would like to press to the side and nest your seams as you go, that's totally a valid option. After I finish row two, then I move on to row three and I put them all back in place so that if you are being picky about your fabric selection and making sure that all your fabrics are in the right place, that you're maintaining that sequence as you sew together. And once I have all my rows together, then it's time to assemble our block. 
once we have our rows together, then we just need to sew these last two seams. Now you can use pins if you would like, or just use your fingers. If you have pressed your seam allowances to the side, then you can just nest your seams however you like to do it. Finally, the last seam. So I pin in this direction just because I use the seam guide here. And if I pin the other way, if I pinned this way, then I would need to remove my pins way back here long before they got to the needle. So I pin this way so that I can leave my pins in the whole time I sew. pull them out and we're done. And now the last step, I cross off the block I just finished and I'm ready to move on. Since these blocks are going to be sitting around for quite a while, I do like to give the seams a nice uh, squirt of starch just to hold them really nicely in place so that in a month or six months or however long it takes me to make all these blocks. When I go back to seam them all together, my seam allowances are still nicely pressed. So if we come across a block that has the, the pickle, the green color in the diagram, all that means is that you'll need to use your background color for those squares. There is the five pickle pieces in a nine patch and then there is a three. And all I do is just lay the pickle pieces out first and then I grab my scraps and build my block around it. Just picking whatever pieces come and placing them however they come. And then I will assemble that block exactly as I did this nine patch. There's just some green pieces instead of all scrap. And the same goes for the five green squares. This three piece diagonal, you can assemble them all in this arrangement. They all just rotate throughout the pattern to give you all of the diagonal lines that you need. So there's nothing special about having it go the other way, having it like this, for example all of the blocks are interchangeable. So you can lay it out however you'd like. I always lay them out the same way just for consistency and ease. That's all there is to making this quilt. All I need to do now is just keep on chugging along and making a ton of additional blocks. Some days I work on this project and just make a block and other days I will sit and make 15 or so blocks in a day. Each one takes me just a few minutes and it feels like this nice little project that is totally accomplishable uh, with just a few minutes of work. And that's really great for days that I am feeling maybe less motivated or I don't have as much time uh, to devote to quilting or I don't want to get a bunch of stuff out to work on. This little basket lives just on the side of my sewing machine over there so it's really easy just to grab it, make a block, and then I can just throw this up into my basket that lives on the shelves over there above my big cutting table and that's where um, the rest of the scraps for this live and all of the completed blocks. I don't know how long it will take me to actually finish this quilt. I've gotten maybe a quarter of it done um, in the couple of weeks since I started it, but I figure maybe another couple months I'll have a complete quilt and then I'll be able to maybe pick a different background color and start it all over again or pick a different pattern and make another quilt with slightly different scraps. Until next time, I'm going to keep working on these little blocks and I hope that um, the next quilt makes you as happy as this one is making me. So until then, happy quilting.